In 2010, the Federation introduced several changes of great importance regarding the rules as far as the car's planning is concerned. The cars can't be refueled anymore, and so the tank had to be redesigned. And at the moment, it is decisively bigger than that of last year. Also, the systems around the chassis and the car in general have been completely reviewed. What I'm referring to is the radiators, the hydraulic system and the car's general systems. Another change regarding the rules can be found in the aerodynamics. Flanges, static flanges, covering the front and rear rims have had to be removed. Naturally, now that the double diffusers have been regularized, the cars have been fundamentally reviewed, because this double diffuser, as a concept, leaves lots of development possibilities and offers lots of performance for the cars to improve. Other changes? Well, because of the much bigger tank, the Federation has introduced a new front crash test to check the car's toughness and central backrest safety. Furthermore, homologation concepts have been introduced. Chassis, front, rear and lateral crash structure and rims have to be homologated for the whole season, which means that there won't be any improvements once they've been used in the first race. And then the transmission ratio number that a team can use has been reduced to 30. These have to be defined before the race based on cost reduction. While also the materials a team can use to build the car have been reviewed for simplification, trying to abandon exotic materials which are raising the costs of components. For 2010, the International Federation introduced two modifications to favor and to encourage the use of the KERS. Unfortunately, the KERS, due to an agreement among the teams, can't be used during this season. The two modifications are a general review of the tyre dimensions and an increase in the car's minimum weight to 620 kilograms from 605. The tyres have been reviewed in the front regarding their width. We are now using tyres one inch narrower and this will lead to a different weight distribution further to the rear. But the tyres have also been made in a different way. They are heavier and naturally Bridgestone, for safety reasons, wanted to review the manufacturing methods. Furthermore, the mix has been reviewed so that they can be used on cold tracks and the tyres will generally be softer than last year as far as the temperature and the mix itself are concerned. The cars for 2010 will have to start with a full tank, so they'll also be heavier by 150, 160, up to 170 kilograms compared to the qualifying. Naturally, the weight will have an influence on the car's performance, and the team's objective is to put as little petrol as possible in the tank. That's why Ferrari and all the other teams reduced consumption regarding the engine, but also considering the use of the car on the track in terms of the systems, which the teams can use with MESS electronics and the cars used by the driver. In this planning and production phase, Ferrari 
actually benefited from the fact that the engine engineers, the chassis engineers and the whole team work in just one place. Therefore, we were able to work closely with the different departments to find the best possible solution. The F-10 was born, like all our cars, during the previous season. Every year we have to balance the pros and the cons as to how many resources we want to dedicate to the ongoing project and how many to the year following. Obviously, 2009 was not a good season for us at all, and during the season, we saw, we understood that it wasn't going to be possible to win the championship anymore, and so at a certain point we took a strong and very important decision to dedicate more resources to the project of next year's car. So, we converted our wind tunnel programs, dedicated all our time to the F-10's development, trying to interpret the rules regarding the double diffuser in the best way possible. The car's rear has been completely reviewed to exploit this new concept as much as possible, and that wasn't possible in the 2009 season. Since the race in Abu Dhabi, up until today, we can say that the F-10 has managed to reach a very interesting performance delta. We're very satisfied with the achieved results in the wind tunnel, but also with the development as far as the overall car is concerned, regarding suspension, transmission and the general system. Obviously, we will only see at the first Grand Prix how the other teams have developed their cars. We have ourselves as a point of reference, and we can see that, compared to the past, we've worked in a very interesting way. The 2010 rules allow us no more than 15 days of testing before the start of the season, all in February. That means less testing compared to previous years. I'm talking about tests on the track. This means we're testing more with the test stand. We need to exploit the window in February as well as possible to set up the car to harmonize the driver's behavior in the car. We've had to develop the car in the test stands to deal with questions of reliability. This year, we've come up with a much more far-reaching program, much wider, if you like, covering many points of view, exactly because we wanted to improve, well, to improve against our own standards, I mean, improve that element of reliability, which I think it's safe to say was not perhaps what it should have been last year. So we've been testing in the test stands, the rear part of the car, the engine, the gearbox, and the car system in general. We've tested the brake system, the suspension, and so we've been doing things like in blocks, in pieces. We've been trying to understand and test as much as possible about the new car in the test stands in order that we'll be ready for the first real test. We've been trying out the car over long distances and, as I said, we want to harmonize the performance of the car with that of the pilots and the new tires. As of the first test, the car's development will begin. The car from the first test will not be the one used in the first race. There will be further aerodynamic development at the last test in February. But there will also be other developments regarding the mechanics. So we'll start work on the suspension and the brakes, but also on other systems in the car, to start developing the car during the four days of testing. And then we'll also plan the developments we want to introduce in the following races. We need an ambitious objective, a long-term objective. We have to plan our development very well, because it will be fundamental to gain a higher development rhythm than our competitors. 
Yes. Now I'll hand you over to Luca Marmorini and Nicolas Dombazis, who will talk about the O56 engine and the F10's single-seater project. 